Hello everyone, I'm Paula Callan and I'm the Scholarly Communications Librarian at QUT and my lightning talk is going to be about our revised open access policy. QUT endorsed its original open access policy 20 years ago and at the time this was groundbreaking. The policy applied to theses and peer-reviewed articles created by QUT staff and research students. It allowed for a 12-month embargo period on the articles. In 2018, the policy was revised to add a requirement that the theses and articles would be made available under a Creative Commons license. And for the journal articles, it was a Creative Commons non-commercial license, but the 12-month embargo period was still allowed. These changes brought our policy into alignment with the ARC and NHMRC open access policies, which both required open access within 12 months under a CC license. Having the backing of an open access policy has certainly helped to make our, open, our institutional repository a great success. And the success of the repository helped consolidate support and enthusiasm for open access in general within the university. The policy has served us well and the cumulative downloads from QUT ePrints now exceed 36 million. And on average every month, more than 130,000 documents are downloaded. However, in 2021, our policy was scheduled for another review and inspired by the University of New South Wales policy and Plan S, we saw this as an opportunity to add some aspirational requirements. So the key changes we introduced were that the peer reviewed articles would be, were to be made available immediately upon publication and under a CC BY license. After a lengthy consultation period within the university, the revised policy was endorsed by the University Academic Board and came into effect at the beginning of this year. So our open access policy is now aligned with the revised open access policy of the NHMRC and all of the funders who are part of the Plan S coalition. Our revised policy includes a rights retention clause. It provides that a set statement should be added to the submitted version, uh, submitted manuscript to inform the publisher about the rights retained by QUT and the fact that a CC BY license will be applied to the author accepted manuscript version. The implications of the policy for our researchers are that where the published version of the article will be open access, any QUT author on the paper needs to ensure that the corresponding author selects a CC BY license if given the choice of license. And where the published version will not be open access, the QUT authors should ensure that the rights retention statement is applied to the manuscript that's submitted for peer review. QUT has actually had a rights retention strategy in place since the beginning. Our, key, our IP policy states that the university owns the IP created by staff in the course of their employment. And while staff have the right to publish, the university retains a, an irrevocable non-exclusive right to use the author accepted manuscript version. And that includes making it available via QUT ePrints. When we did a risk analysis, we identified what we think are the main risks and we've put some strategies in place for dealing with them. The first risk is that a publisher may send us a takedown notice in relation to an accepted manuscript version that's being made available in immediately rather than after an embargo period. And if this happens, the repository team will comply immediately by locking down access to the file and for the remainder of the embargo period. Another risk is that a publisher may object to the fact that we've applied a CC BY license to um, an accepted manuscript version rather than the CC license they specified. Now, this is probably a more serious risk. So unless the repository team actually see a rights retention statement on a, an author manuscript version, um, we will 
make it available under the CC license specified by the publisher. We anticipate that the need for these strategies will reduce with time as more of our articles are published open access and more authors remember to apply the rights retention statement to their submitted manuscripts. So to summarise, we saw an opportunity to make our open access policy more aspirational and we took it. We know that changing academic behaviour in relation to rights retention will take time. So we are implementing the revised policy gradually in a way that minimises legal risk. Our policy, though, is now aligned with funder requirements and with global good practice. Thank you.